For this week on Cyber School, I wanted to crank out a quick video on multicast setup and how you can go through and plan as you're starting to um, design a multicast paging system. Maybe you've got your uh, product already in house and you're you know, starting the actual setup process to get multicast configured and get everything working, or you're planning on it as, you know, say you're going through maybe a design service from Cyberdata, and you wanna understand a little bit more about setting up multicast. Hopefully today's video can kind of walk you through the process and the steps that you should take as you're going through regular multicast setup on your suite of products. So first for the setup process as you're going through it, you wanna determine the number of zones or paging groups. And zones and paging groups, while um, sometimes colloquial, well, sometimes they're referred to as different things, but for today's discussion, essentially a zone is going to be a paging group. A paging group is a zone. They're just different ways to um, kind of uh, describe the areas that you're going to be paging from. The next step is to determine where the multicast is going to be coming from, meaning what is going to originate or create the multicast. Would it be something like a paging server? Would it be something like your phones or another device, say like a multicast microphone? There's, you know, that way you can go and determine where all the multicast is going to be coming from. Next, where, what group, what devices are actually going to be in what groups? That way you can determine and kind of figure out, uh, you know, if you can go to the extent, get the MAC addresses or the serial numbers of the specific devices that are going to be in each group that makes the planning process that much easier as you're going through the actual configuration process, which is going to be your next step. And that part is actually really easy um, for the purposes of today's video. We're going to be going through and utilizing the paging server for the actual multicast configuration aspect. It's a really good source for multicast, um, but there's a variety of other options that you could potentially utilize over there and, and just really utilizing the copy and paste feature, which takes a lot of the pain issues out of configuration. And then finally, you want to test it and you want to make sure everything works uh, as expected and uh, is up to par for for what you were expecting out of the system. Testing is an absolutely crucial part of an emergency notification system, not only making sure that everything is working functionally, but also that the volume levels are adequate in all the different areas. And then once you get that ironed out, every speaker is producing audio like it's supposed to, and the audio is, leg is understandable and is at a good level, it's audible, then you want to go through and just test it on a regular basis. And that part is up to your organization, whether it's, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, at the latest, maybe once a quarter, God forbid, you know, once a year. But, you know, you really do want to test your emergency notification system on a fairly regular basis, just because it is an emergency notification system. And it's something that you're hopefully not going to be using very often, but you want to make sure that it's functional at those times of crisis when you need to be able to use it. So as you're determining the number of zones, again, zones or paging groups, it's just areas where paging is going to be required. Um, these can be specific, like large mass notification groups, say an entire warehouse area, or say, you know, an entire building in a school camp in a school campus, or it can be very much more granular and you get down to specific devices. Say if you've got a lunch area and you've got one speaker in a lunch area, you could create a zone that's just for that lunch area. So that way you could easily page to that. You know, a zone doesn't necessarily have to be a huge wide compassing mass notification area. A zone can literally be a single device in a single room. That part is up to you and how you want to set it up. Um, and a lot of the times as you're going through and creating these different um, zones or areas to do paging in, there will be different combinations of them. Say, for example, you get your warehouse and the lunch area, or you get, um, you know, say the warehouse and engineering, the parking lot and the delivery bay, what have you, you'll have combinations of zones that is effectively another big zone. And then another paradigm to consider is an all page versus an emergency all page. With cyberdata devices and some other devices out there in the uh, paging ecosystem, there are differentiations between a regular page and an emergency page. In a cyberdata world, for devices like speakers, office ringers, or horns, the emergency notification level for multicast, priority number nine in all of our devices, is what we deem emergency, and that's deemed by cyber data as emergency. And those will operate a little bit differently where they will supersede over everything. They will not buffer, meaning all of the audio is live, and it will always 
meaning always, no matter what, how you configure it, it will always play at maximum volume regardless of your configuration. So if you have that speaker tuned down just because you only need it, you know, just in that Goldilocks zone and you need it just right, if an emergency announcement comes through, that thing's blaring at max volume because it's for an emergency and you want it to be loud. So there's some distinctions there as you're going and designing your configuration style because you might not uh, want it to go and blare it full blast at full volume in the event of an emergency. So then you can utilize the other priorities. So that way you still have the volume control. For today's demonstration, we're just going to have three zones. It's going to be a pretty simple setup where we've just got an interior, exterior, and an all page, which would just be both the interior and the exterior together. So now that we've got all that figured out and we kind of understand the zoning, you need to understand and determine what is going to be your multicast source as you're going through and planning your system. Um, of course, you know, with cyber data, we always recommend using something like our paging server because it gives you a simple head unit to be able to call to go and multicast to 100 different paging groups, gives you a wide capability to go and set up your zoning options. But you can also do that from a regular desk phone. Most desk phones out there, whether it's a Yaylink, a Poly, a SNOM, you know, what have you, a Grandstream, you know, they're all gonna support actual multicast origination and receiving on the devices themselves. So not only can the phones send the multicast, but they can also receive it. So in offices where you not might not need a dedicated speaker, you can have something like the speaker of an actual regular desk phone operate as essentially a paging speaker in an office. Of course, if you wanna go that route. A lot of users that do that only utilize that for emergency notification so that way if somebody is having say a call in their office or is having some quiet time in there you know perhaps you know meeting with someone they're not just getting the regular announcements through their phones but CyberData also has other unique devices that can send multicast. Of course, you know, one of our big ones is our multicast microphone, where you get a nice little boom style mic and you press and hold the button and you can talk into it and it sends that multicast out, which makes that product really popular for schools or use in uh, all page groups, just because it's easy. You walk up to it, you press a button and you talk, and then it gets multicasted through your system. But when you're dealing with all of these different multicast sources and the different multicast recipients, you need to consider both standard and proprietary multicast. There are some sticklers out there in the industry that took multicast and changed it and tweaked it a bit to work, quote, better in some environments. Um, and that is by mixing in different proprietary special things into the open source that is multicast. This can be things like channels, say, for example, with polyphones, they utilize channels instead of the typical paradigm of multiple address and port combinations without getting into the weeds. It makes it it can make it a little bit more complicated to incorporate polyphones into a paging system. But then you get some of the other mass notification style software suites, such as Single Wires Informacast or Intrato's uh, Synapse Revolution that both use and built upon standard multicast but added in some stuff that arguably makes the multicast itself function a little bit better um, to go and uh, build that kind of capability in there. So that's something to consider. Where is the multicast going to be coming from? And is it standard or is it proprietary style multicast? And another thing to consider is just the adjustability and a configuration of the multicast source that you're working with. Something like the SIP paging server has a hundred different groups that you're working with. So it is very adjustable and you can tailor it to exactly what you're trying to do. Whereas the multicast microphone only has a single button, so it has a single multicast group or zone that it can page to, and it's not particularly adjustable as compared to, say, something like the paging server. So these are all things to consider as you're determining your source for the multicast. Then finally, you have to consider the devices that are going to be in a paging group. So most devices, and this is, you know, of course, cyber data devices, but the wide majority of similar endpoints that are in the industry and even phones are basically going to support 10 multicast groups. And with these 10 different groups, these are just going to be address and port combinations that each device can listen to. And with these 10 different groups, it means that a device can be in multiple groups because there's 10 different listings on there. But with 10 different group possibilities, there has to be some kind of a hierarchical system to determine 
which priority, you know, which group is going to play over another group. So almost every system and every device has some kind of a ranking that you can utilize basically based on the number of the group that you're programming into the device um, to give that particular priority. Of course, with cyber data products, we work with zero and go to nine, where nine is your emergency, your highest priority, and zero is your lowest priority. Basically build from the bottom up. And most other devices are very similar to that. There are some exceptions out there. But when you're going and designing the different devices that are going to be in a group and the hierarchicalness of your um, different paging groups that you're utilizing, more often than not, um, your all page is going to be your highest priority just because that's intended to go to every single endpoint. It's an all page. So it, you know, in some cases should supersede a specific page to say one area, say the interior area, just as an example. Finally, we can move on to configuration. Now that we have all the parts and pieces figured out, you want to go through and you want to create your groups. So to create your groups, depending on the actual product that you're going to be doing a lot of this configuration on. For me, I did it for us in our demonstration today. I did it on the SIP paging server. So if you're SIP paging server, I usually find it's easier to um, change the receiving devices, uh, multicast addresses, rather than change the sending devices because it's you just have to touch a couple more places and it's easier when you're dealing with a large amount of groups. So on the paging server, I went through and set up group zero as our emergency all page labeled as emergency in there. Group number one as our interior page and group number three as our exterior. And one of the most important things and one of the most beneficial things that you can do uh, to help yourself and anybody else that's gonna be managing this thing is it all might make a whole bunch of sense that 234.2.1.1 is gonna be your emergency all page. Of course, it's 234, but six months down the line, a year down the line, or, you know, say if somebody else takes over a position or somebody else handles the paging system and there's no labels in there, they might not have any idea what that particular address means. So label everything and just make sure that you're being as verbose as possible when you're going and creating this information because it'll help you in the future if you have to manage this stuff or if somebody else has to manage it, it makes it very, very clear what these different groups are there for. So now that we've got all of that established and all our labels are done, you want to take and copy the address and port combination from the paging server into the receiving devices. So as you'll see, based on our configuration here, we've got our emergency all page group number is zero there in the SIP paging server address 234.2.1.1 at port 2000 has been copy and pasted into priority number nine of both of our devices here. The wall mounted VoIP SIP multicast horn or speaker as well as the IP66 horn. That's going to be listed there in priority number nine because that's our emergency all page group. And you just want to make sure that you get the address in the address field and the port in the port field. Our devices don't do um, like you'll get in other configurations where um, or other devices where it will be addressed colon port. Our devices have distinct fields for those different values. So that way your address goes in the address field and your port goes in the port field. And you'll notice there for the emergency value, we don't have the buffer checkbox available. That one is uh, not allowed uh, uh, from cyber data for the emergency all page. That one's always going to be quote a live page. So that way the device won't record it and play it back after the fact. It will just play it live. So now that we've got the emergency all page group configured, then we can move on to the interior paging group, which is going to be 234.2.1.2 at port 2002, and of course labeled as such. And since that's only going to be for our interior speaker, we're going to copy and paste that field into priority number eight of the indoor speaker. And we're not going to do that for the outdoor horn, of course, because that's an outdoor horn and it's in the exterior, it is not in the interior page group. So as you can see with the little green line that we have there, it only goes to the number eight for the speaker. It does not go to the horn again because it's not in that group. Whereas group number two on the SIP paging server address 234.2.1.3 port 2004 
labeled exterior and kind of our maybe indigo or cyber data blue, whatever you want to call that color, is going to be our exterior paging group. And that's going to be listed in priority number eight of the outdoor horn. So now with this configuration done, we've got both devices configured for their emergency all page group and their individual paging groups. Of course, you'll want to save and reboot for these changes to take effect. A reboot isn't always required, but it's always just good practice to just go and make sure that all of the settings are applied and everything works properly. So now with that done and configured, the final step is testing. Of course, just because uh, uh, you know overhead paging and emergency notification is an absolute mission critical resource of your entire building. It's something that you know is utilized seldomly, but you want to make sure that that thing works. So as you're going through and testing the system, you want to test every zone and every endpoint point in every zone and it can be kind of a cumbersome process when you get it set up because it's going to require one person walking around and you know having a test in each area and checking the volume of every speaker but it's really good to go through and do that and just ensure the good volume levels throughout and when you're going through and if you need to make adjustments to volume levels through your devices as you're going through and doing the testing process, um, it's all going to be go. It's all going to be adjusted on the receiving devices. The sending devices do not have adjustments, whether it's cyber data products or even others. Multicast is just sent out, and the voltage, the amplitude, or you know the volume of it, what have you, is just sent by the actual recording device. Our device is just kind of an intermediary at this point, and the actual volume, the output is uh, adjusted on the actual receiving endpoints. And then as you go through and you've checked out every zone and every device has an adequate volume level, just double check all your labels. Just make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's and just make sure that everything is done nice and good while the paging system design is fresh in your mind. And then once you've got all that done, you're basically safe to just, you know, hopefully not use your system very often because, you know, hopefully you're not using it for emergency notification, but be sure to test it frequently. And, you know, you can set that frequency and when you test it, based on the requirements of the particular place where it's being utilized. You know, if it's a, you know, fire extinguisher manufacturing company, Hopefully you don't need to use it very much because hopefully that's a very safe building. But, you know, if it's school or someplace that's, you know, I don't know, building, um, I don't know, fireworks or something that's a little bit more dangerous, you might want to test that a little bit more uh, frequently just to be sure that, you know, it's it's functional. So, you know, work with, you know, your, your health and safety teams at your workplace to ensure that your system is tested adequately and frequently just to be sure that it's still functional in those times of crisis when you need it to work. Thank you for watching this edition of CyberSchool. If you have any questions, please get in contact with our sales department. They are available by email at sales at cyberdata.net or by phone at 831-373-2601 extension 334. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this from CyberData.